Okay, so this is a tutorial on the bones of the pelvis. So you've got a few bones that make up the pelvic skeleton. So you've got these two large hip bones on either side, a sacrum, and you've got the coccyx. So these two hip bones are actually called the os cocci. So this comes from the Latin. So os means bone and cocci means of the hip. So it's the bone of the hip, the hip bone. So you've got two hip bones, a sacrum and a coccyx. So the pelvis is separated into two regions. You've got the upper region, the superior part of the pelvic bone, um, which is called the false pelvis, and it's also called the greater pelvis. And you've got the lower part, the inferior part of the pelvis, which is called the true pelvis or the lesser pelvis. So the upper part of the pelvis is called the false pelvis because um, it's often regarded as part of the abdominal cavity rather than the pelvic cavity. So the lower part is the true pelvis because that contains the actual pel pelvic cavity. So the lesser pelvis begins at the pelvic inlet which is formed by this rim here. So you've got the uh, body of S1 and then this rim which um, is formed around here which I'm showing you with the mouse. So this is the pelvic inlet and below this you've got the pelvic cavity and this is housed in the lesser pelvis or the true pelvis. So if I just bring in the abdominal organs oops, you can see that the the upper part of the pelvis actually um, <coughs> sits with the abdominal organs whereas the lesser pelvis so you can see the pelvic inlet here at this rim so you've got the um, the bladder anteriorly the uh, reproductive tract behind it and most posteriorly you've got the rectum so these these all lie in the pelvic cavity within the true pelvis so I'll do a tutorial on the a separate tutorial on the pelvic cavity and I'll talk about the inlet, the outlet, the walls and the floors in that. But this tutorial I'll just talk you through the features of the pelvic bones. So the hip bone, the os coxa coxi, sorry, um, comprises there's three parts to it. So at birth there are three bones which are joined by cartilaginous joints at the acetabular fossa so this this is the acetabular area um, and this is the this is where the head of the femur articulates with the um, hip so this is the hip joint um, and at birth you've got you've got three bones you've got the ilium superiorly the ischium postero inferiorly and the pubis antero um, antero inferiorly and just at this region here they're all joined by cartilaginous joints and these are fused in the adult so it's actually one large bone in the adult so we're just looking laterally at the hip here um, and I'll just show you where the ischium lies so this is the ischium posterior inferiorly so this is the ischium at the this is posterior this side here and this is anterior so anteriorly you've got the pubis and above you've got the ilium so if I just rotate the model round again we can look at it medially so I'll just remove this and we can look at the medial view so here anteriorly we've got the pubis so that's this portion here and then posteriorly We've got the ischium in this region and above it the ilium. So I'll just talk you through some of the features of the ilium, the ischium and the pubis. So I'll just remove the femurs. So here you can see the head of the femur sitting in the acetabulum. So this is the acetabulum here. So I'll just remove this so we can see the hip bones a bit more clearly. I'll remove these as well. So starting superiorly we've got the iliac crest. So this is this flattened crest at the top of the um the ilium. 
and you've got muscles which attach here so I won't talk about them in this tutorial but that's the iliac crest and this lies at the level of L4 so this is this is the L4 lumbar vertebra and this is also the area where the aorta bifurcates so if I just bring that in you can see the bifurcation of the aorta, aorta at the level L4 so the the, uh, the iliac crest is a useful landmark to know because um, it marks the point of L4 and you know that the level of L4 is well below the the end of the spinal cord so it's a useful landmark for lumbar punctures so if I just bring in the, the nervous system you can see the the end of the spinal cord well above the level of the iliac crest so you've got the iliac crest here and the end of the spinal cords up here so it's a useful landmark for lumbar punctures so if we follow the iliac crest forward it comes to this spine so this, this is the anterior superior iliac spine. So this is also a useful landmark. Um, and this can be easily palpated. Um, and attaching to this, we've got the inguinal ligament. And this runs from the anterior superior iliac spine, which is known as ACIS, because it's a lot easier to say than anterior superior iliac spine. And this runs from, the in inguinal ligament runs from ACIS to the pubic tubercle. And this is uh, this is useful to know another useful landmark because midway you can you can feel the pubic tubercle as well so you can feel both these landmarks ACIS and the pubic tubercle so midway between these two landmarks you can palpate the femoral artery so if I just bring that into view so you can see the this artery running halfway between this these two points so just inferior to ACIS you've got the anterior inferior iliac spine and if we follow the iliac crest posteriorly we come to the posterior superior iliac spine and below that we've got the posterior inferior iliac spine and then if we follow it round we've got this notch in the ilium so this is the greater sciatic notch and below that we've got the ischial spine. So this is actually part of the ischium, which I'll come on to talk about. Um, so above the ischial spine, you've got the greater sciatic notch, and below the ischial spine, you've got the lesser sciatic notch. So we're looking laterally. This is a lateral view of the pelvic bone, the hip bone, and this is where the gluteal muscles attach. So you can see these large gluteal muscles. You've got the gluteus maximus, medius and minimus um, so they attach on this lateral surface of the bone and you've actually got um, a few uh, ridges on this bone which you can't see here but I'll just mention them so you've got the posterior gluteal line an anterior gluteal line and an inferior gluteal line uh, which are roughened ridges where the gluteal muscles attach So on the medial surface you've got this sort of slight hollowing in the bone and this is called the iliac fossa and you've got the iliacus muscle which attaches here. So you can see how it sits there and it inserts on the femur so this flexes the hip, it's one of the hip flexors. So another quick thing to mention before moving on is the angle of the pelvis. So if we just imagine a horizontal line uh, running along here. Um, the angle of the pelvis is actually at about 50 to 60 degrees to this horizontal line. The, sorry, the angle of the pelvic inlet. So the pelvic inlet is this uh, brim here, this rim. So the pelvic inlet is actually angled at about a 50 degree angle to this horizontal line. So an angle like this. And also at this angle, you can see the pubic tubercle here and the anterior superior iliac spine are in the same plane so this is the, the same um, vertical plane here so next we've got the ischium so this lies um, inferiorly and posteriorly so it's this bit here so I mentioned the ischial spine so we're looking uh, from a posterior view at the pelvis so you've got the sacrum here and I showed you the greater sciatic notch and you've got the ischial spine here. So you've got a ligament, you've got two important ligaments to know about here. So you've got the 
um, sacrospinous ligament and you've got the sacrotubus ligament. So right at the bottom part of the ischium you've got this tuberosity, this is the ischial tuberosity. So the sacrospinous ligament runs from the sacrum to the ischial spine and the sacrotubus ligament runs from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity. So I've just brought those ligaments in, you can see the sacrotubus ligament attaching onto the tuberosity and the sacrospinous ligament attaching onto the spine. So it's actually a bit further up here. So above this you've got the greater sciatic foramen and below you've got the lesser sciatic foramen. So you've got the ischial spine, the ischial tuberosity and if we rotate anteriorly you've got the ramus of the ischium. So this big hole here is the obturator foramen and this is covered by a membrane and there's a little gap above the membrane where the obturator vessels and nerve run. So I've just brought the membrane into view here and you've got this little canal up here, the obturator canal and you've got the obturator um, vessels, artery and nerve and the obturator, sorry, artery and vein and the obturator nerve which come through this. So coming back to the ischium, so, you've, so if you remember the lateral view, the anterior inferior part is the pubis and half of this, half of this bone uh, is, part, is, the pu is part of the pubis and the other half is part of the ischium. So this is the ischio, ischio collectively this is the ischio pubic ramus, um, but the posterior bit is the um, ramus of the ischium and the anterior part is the inferior ramus of the pubis. pubis. So that's the ischium, it's this posterior inferior bit. So next we've got the pubis, this is the last bit. So this is the anterior and inferior part. So you've got, a, the pubis has a body and it's got these two arms, these two branches. So you've got the superior ramus and the inferior ramus. So you've got the superior pubic ramus the inferior pubic ramus the, uh, and the body and where the two pelvic bones meet this is called the pubic symphysis and this little protuberance is called the um, pubic tubercle so this is palpable so those are the um, those are the features of the pelvic bones so the hip bones, so the ossa cocci. So at the back you've got the sacroiliac joints, at the front you've got the pubic symphysis and the sacrum articulates above with the fifth lumbar vertebra and below it articulates uh, with the coccyx. So next I'll just do a quick tutorial on the sacrum and the coccyx.